Yeah, so uh, just so everyone knows, I was at the BBC working in BBC News for about nine years, about a decade ago, and I'm a big supporter of the BBC, and I think they try to get things right. I also personally know John Simpson a little bit and have a lot of respect for him, but I have exchanged views with him on Twitter because I think he and the BBC have got this wrong. I understand it's very complicated. I understand the tragic history of what's been going on in Palestine and Israel. Mm -hmm. I understand that the BBC tries desperately, bends over backwards to try to be neutral. But if people come into Israel and murder babies and rape women and take hostages and kill innocents, then they are terrorists. Mm -hmm. And if those acts had happened in England or in America or in France or if they'd been carried out by ISIS, the BBC would have called them terrorists. Hamas are a prescribed terror organisation in the UK. The BBC is the British Broadcasting Corporation and I think it should be brave enough to call a terrorist a terrorist. Well, let's look at what John Simpson actually said on Twitter, Carol. He said, yeah. British politicians know perfectly well why the BBC avoids the word terrorist. And over the years, plenty of them have privately agreed with it. Calling someone a terrorist means that you're taking sides and ceasing to treat the situation with due impartiality. The BBC's job is to place the facts before its audience and let them decide what they think honestly and without ranting. That's why in Britain and throughout the world, nearly half a billion people watch, listen and read to us. There's always someone who would like us to rant. Sorry, it's not what we do. We're not asking them to rant. We're yes. asking them to we're call a spade them, a spade. We're asking them for truth and balance. Babe. Yeah. That's what we're asking for. And we don't get that from the BBC anymore. You know, this, this Simpson, you know, I used to respect John Simpson hugely, but but I, I don't, he's living in a world now. He's living with, he's talking about the BBC maybe 30 years ago. He's not talking about about the BBC yeah. today. You know, the BBC shows bias all of the time. I mean, if this wasn't so... This, you, know, you could laugh at what he said mm. if this wasn't such a serious yeah. situation. The BBC now, it, the major criticism of it is that it's not impartial, that it's left-leaning. Mm. And we know it is pro-Palestinian. If you listen to the reporting on Saturday from various radio programmes, the, you know, Israel, Israel was barely mentioned at all. Now, I'm not taking sides here, but when, as Matt says, when babies are beheaded, when women are raped, when old people are shot at bus stops, we have to call this terrorism. And, and Simpson is a hypocrite because he has used the word terrorist to describe Islamist people who do this kind of stuff, yeah. the terrorists who do. He has used that word to describe them. Can I just come back on that? Because while I, while I agree that... Simpson and the BBC are wrong not to call these people terrorists. They are terrorists. I disagree with Carol in her assertion that the BBC is pro-Palestinian. I don't think it is. I think it tries it very hard to be, the, to be unbiased. with the Palestinian cause more than who has sympathy with, with the Israeli cause. And that's what we can't have from the BBC. Just on this question Truth of, of sympathy for causes, OK? As we all know, it's a deeply complicated mm. history and it's a deeply complicated present. My grandparents survived the Holocaust. They escaped just before the Holocaust. They were Jews in Vienna. They were refugees. That is my background. I'm deeply proud of my heritage. What we saw in Israel over the weekend were the savage acts of evil terrorists. Now the question is what happens next? Mm. And when I see Palestinian children, and I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying that you don't get collateral damage in war, but when I see Palestinian children dying and Palestinian parents exactly. with their faces grieving, just as Israeli parents have, it breaks my heart, and I call on Israel to act proportionally, and as the American... The American politicians have done as well and have said the rules of law, such as they are, have to be upheld. Carol. I mean, everything you said is, of course, it, we, we don't want to see any kids dying in any way, shape or form. But you know what I'm seeing now in, in this country, and I hate it, there's a narrative developing here. And it's like they asked for it. And it really shocks me to my core. You know, we're seeing girls with bloodied legs and we know what's happened to them. Mm. And they asked for it. We're seeing women being spat on the backs of trucks, having been wrecked. They asked for it. We're seeing kids being killed. They asked for it. No, they didn't ask for that. You know, this is what terrorists do, is they attack civilians. And that is the wrong thing to do. You know, let, let, let Palestine and Israel sort out their cause, but not and by killing people. Just, to come, just killing. quickly to say on that, although there is a, a very wide context, it's complicated, and I think the far-right Israeli government has done a lot of very, very bad things, and I think the settlements 
are acts of evil, and I use those words know. carefully. No, no, but no, this is important to say. We know Nonetheless, we have a big problem in this country with the hard left. I couldn't support Labour when because Jeremy Corbyn yes. was the leader. And I find it absolutely despicable in the last few days some of the comments that have come out on social media from the hard left in this country mm -hmm. who have not done enough absolutely to condemn the acts of barbarity that we've seen. Where are all those voices? Where are all the celebrity voices who on a normal day are condemning immigration, whatever? Where are they? Where is Gary Lineker? Where is... What's her name? Um, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Where is the other one? Um, Dame... The actress. Judy Dench. No, no, no. no, the no blonde. Um, Who's the, oh, blonde. Helen Mirren? No. no. Careful, guys. Let's not days. throw names around. But, I know. But <laughs> the thing about the BBC, they've got the cover. As Matt says, you know, Hamas is a prescribed terrorist Terrible. organisation. Mm. What more cover does the BBC need yes. in order to do that? You've got four KCs who've written to Ofcom asking them to investigate this. I mean, this is quite extraordinary. Do you it think, really is an utter failure. But is it, is it that the BBC, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here, is it that the BBC wants to demonstrate uh, empathy and sympathy for the civilian Palestines to draw the distinction between them and Hamas? Would they argue that's what Well, they what haven't done no, that, have they? But no, they no, don't no, have no, no, done no, that. I don't, I, look, I don't think that's a justification for not calling a terrorist yeah. a terrorist. But what I will say is, although I think they've got it badly wrong in this case, I don't think it comes from a bad place. I do think that the BBC tries very, very hard, whether it's domestic politics, and sometimes it gets it wrong, whether it's domestic politics so or internationally, it tries, it? tries to be so unbiased. Why is there criticism of the BBC for not being It gets criticised from that, both sides, from all true. sides, it well, does. It's, it's ludicrous for them to say they're right-leaning because they're clearly not. Would, but does it... Um, I would have thought whether... I wonder whether Carol's point about the fact that, as John Simpson is talking almost not of this era, it's, is it that this is outdated, yeah. Director, from the BBC? I fully expected on Saturday morning for there to be a meeting in the BBC and say, this changes everything. We change our language and we now describe... I will be very terrible. interested to see how Ofcom responds to these cases, what, one or two of them I know actually very well, who have written to Ofcom to complain about this. I want Ofcom to act mm. as quickly as it can, but it needs, to, it needs to be thoughtful as well. And I would like actually there to be an internal investigation within the BBC so that its editorial standards, its editorial guidelines are properly reviewed because they have to be fit for purpose. What is the fear? What, what fear do the BBC have, Carol, of calling them terrorists? Who are they frightened of? I, I don't understand, but, but all I can say is the stuff that I have read today from various commentators who understand the situation w way better than me, and they say that they are... They are <clears throat> pro-Palestinian leaning. Now, Rod Little wrote his, his column lead on this mm. today, and he said if you had listened to various radio shows, and he listened to lots of programmes on Saturday, and he said the only interviews he heard were from Palestinian women about how this was going to affect mm. them. Yeah. He said, you know, if you, want to, if you want to say you're a balanced corporation, if you want to say if you want truth and balance, you have to talk to both sides and you have to get both. Mm. And especially as the massacre had taken place in Israel, you should be definitely covering that, and it, and the, it didn't the, appear to be covered. One of the grave problems in all of this is even if you are an Israeli government that I would say get behind and support and you wanted to do the humanitarian thing, if you take away those security fences from Gaza, and that would be what I would certainly want ideally, you have a bunch of terrorists running the place who want to drive the Jews into the sea, yeah. which is why it is such an incredibly difficult situation because my heart bleeds mm. for those million children in that strip, a million children who are caught between the Israeli government and the wickedness of Hamas. What about you as a, as a Jewish person living in this country, Matt? How do you feel? I mean, do you feel unsafe here? Because lots of stuff that I'm reading today from mums who are, who are thinking of taking their kids out of school who are terrified now of growing up in this Britain. My way of living my life is to live without fear. I think once you start feeling fear, I'm just talking personally, I'm not belittling the fear of others. Once you start feeling fear, you start to, to, to get lost. But my heart goes out to every single Jew in this country who does feel vulnerable. And the idea that some school children have been advised by their school not necessarily to wear blazers or that if they don't wear their blazers, yeah. it would be understood because there are fears of attacks and on Jewish are... children sickens me where to the, the core of my being. And we need... So
So we absolutely they... need the police to take every well, single incident say, they, extremely then? seriously. That woman who was in the mail today, who was shouting, she's in a restaurant and she's shouting, oh, your people are dead. Mm. Good. A young girl, Why like she barely a teenager, uh, talking to some Jews in a restaurant, as you say, yes. and saying, ha ha, your, your, your are your are people dead? dead? And yeah. It's just grotesque. That is, a, that is a grotesque failure of our authorities, yeah. of our respect, of our belief in who we are as a nation. Of humanity. And, uh, of, but, and this is the United Kingdom. I mean, this is, it, it's a complete failure that mm. that could be allowed to happen, that mm. the Jewish people in this country should be afraid. Could I tell you a quick story as, as a Jewish person? Uh, and my father is Jewish, my, my grandparents, as I said, were Jewish, and I identify as Jewish. Hitler would have uh, had me out the door within seconds. So at moments like this, my Ju Jewish identity becomes stronger. Yeah. During the last conflict between... Palestine or Palestinians and, and Israel or Hamas and Israel, there was another demonstration in Kensington High Street and I don't live far from there. I grew up around there and I was at a restaurant with my then girlfriend, now wife, and we saw a, a, a bunch of about eight, nine white English thugs moving down the street with a stick quite soon after one of these pro-Palestine demonstrations. And I don't know whether they were involved or they were jumping on the bandwagon, but they said, we're looking for Jews. Wow. And I wanted to get up and remonstrate with them because that's who I am. And your girlfriend And my girlfriend don't do said, don't do that. And people on Twitter, of course, mocked me and said, oh, yeah, of course your girlfriend said that. No, I want to confront anti-Semitism when I find it. Mm. It's a very densely populated area with the Arab, Arabic community in Kensington High Street. I, I want, but I also want to say this, and this is very, very important. We are looking at a tiny minority of people who say these horrific things, yeah. who go on demonstrations whipping up hatred. This is not the British Muslim community.